This okay. conference will now be recorded. Is it clear to all of you? Yes, ma'am, we can, we can hear. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Davina. Okay, so this session is all about uh, making sure that uh, this is nothing to discuss about the whatever your guidelines, your SPAs, your EMQs, nothing at all. This is basically to help you to understand the basics before the exams, like what you should be doing, what you, what you shouldn't be doing, what you should be taking, what you shouldn't leave, things like that, okay? So just lay back, relax, and give your uh, brain a space so that it will get time to relax. I am not going to take much of your time, could be half an hour, that should be fine for me to complete the things, okay? So first thing is keep calm. Of course, your countdown has started, only four more days, including today, but that's more than enough because there should be an end to everything, right? Uh, because you have been really, really struggling hard and giving all your time and energy for this, not even to your families, not even to yourself. So definitely this is the, this time is gonna end, but I wish and hope and pray that all of you would definitely come out with the flying colors. So to help you to do that, these are quick tips and tricks, how to handle the stress and how to handle the exam and what you should be doing and how the Pearson screen looks like. Okay, so the basic uh, thing is all about, today's session is all about that. Okay, so if I ask a question of, to all of you, are you ready for the exam? All of you would say definitely, no, you are not ready because of the volume of the portions what you actually uh, need to cover, right? Because it's quite voluminous and you might be really uh, struggling to finish everything. But trust me, you would have done all the uh, best possible things in your time frame and in your situation. So what you should really focus uh, is to relax and to calm down yourself and to go with a happy and a relaxed mind and not to panic. Of course, a little bit of a stress is always good to do better and it keeps you on the track, but nothing should be too much so that you might not be able to, you know, you might not be able to answer the questions at all. And one thing which I've thought of here is revision notes. Never take these things. I will come to that that in a while because this is something which is a very essential thing for you guys to remember. Okay, so what to carry? This is a very, very, very essential slide. People who don't follow this, uh, you might not be able to get an entry into the exam. Please remember about the ID cards. I know most of you have got a call, uh, I mean, a message from the mail from the college. You need to produce a proper ID. As I had described before also, the first primary ID is a government issued ID. It could be anything. Uh, if you are staying in Abu Dhabi or the Gulf countries, you have the Emirates IDs. If you are here in India, you have the other cards or you have the passport, which you can carry. And the second ID should have your photograph and the signature to make sure that you are the person. And please remember, this matches with whatever the name you have given. And the college has specifically uh, given you the, <clears throat> uh, uh, like uh, the and specifically mentioned if somebody's name is changed and the college is given the permission to attend them with that name, you need to carry that evidence as well. Okay. And the second most important thing is this is a time to keep yourself safe, right? So please carry your mask. It could be surgical mask, it could be N95, but they don't allow anything uh, like a face sheet. Okay. You can carry your sanitizers in your bag for sure. Definitely, they would also need to make that. So they will have their as well and keep social distancing. And the one thing which you really need to take is because you're putting too much pressure on stress on your brain. So your brain needs glucose. So please do take some snacks. Could be a biscuit, could be a toffee, could be a fruit, like banana, apple, whatever, and carrying that in your bag. First thing is because you might not get any uh, eateries outside because of the COVID situation. And second thing, uh, it might not be safe as well. Okay, so it's always good to carry the small toffees and the fruit and things like that here uh, with you. And please carry them. Uh, I, uh, like maybe you can download the whole ticket or you can show in your mobile or gadget also about your whole ticket. So these are the essential things which you really need to carry. What next? How uh, I just put across this one just to make you to understand how well you can spend your time in these coming which is not four days remaining, 25th is almost done. So I would just get through the guidelines, okay? So ideally, whatever you're doing today, you can finish off today. 26, you should revise your GDT. Revise means it is not right. 
Okay, it's so line by line from introduction from statistics, epidemiology, you have, uh, no, you have to flip through the pages. Flipping through, definitely flip through. You can finish your GTGs. <clears throat> you don't need actually one day. You can finish your GTGs in uh, maybe half a day. And then the next half, you can just flip through the average. You don't know the speed at which and when the days are nearing, you keep flipping. And days change. Because the speed with which you are able to grasp, the speed with which you are able to review it is quite quick and quite faster. And this is not to remember anything. You are actually giving your mind the confidence that you remember everything. Okay, please remember these quick flipping through is to console your mind that you have already revised multiple times. Okay, but trust me, whatever you answer is always maybe the point which you heard in the class or maybe what you had read wrong. But this visual impact flipping through helps you to give a lot of confidence and it helps you to remember facts well in the exam set. Along with that, you can do, please revise from the source what you have read. If you have read from your iPad, if you have read from your guideline, if you have made your own notes, you have made your flashcards, whatever, however, wherever, you please review through that. Okay? And you can flip through the rest of the things like the nice talk, consent forms, whatever. Okay? And that, uh, like anything you feel that is something which you are bad at, maybe veteran medicine, you just want to flip through. The moment you start flipping through, okay, of course, initially you will be like, no, 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 how am I flipping through? Please keep uh, a timer of around, maybe in one hour you should finish at least four guidelines. Okay, so the thing is actually that is very slow. Once you start flipping through, your life becomes much easier and you try to flip through a lot. And trust me, it's the only way you can flip through and finish before you go to the exam. You should allocate to the points at the topics which you're really not confident in. There are a couple of topics, how many times you read, you will miss on that. So those are the days, that is the day which when you revise those topics and also maybe going through your flashcards and standing in front of your revision wall and finishing that. And one thing if you guys want to pass this exam and one advice if you want to take from me is to stop studying the day before you. I know. Uh, you might think, oh, what is this? Sonia has gone crazy. Trust me, I haven't gone crazy. And this is one thing which has helped me to clear the exams. Actually, I had stopped studying before my exams that, that evening. And actually, I went out for a walk. I went out for a dinner uh, outside and I came back. And the next day when I got up, I actually I stopped finish. I stopped touching the books by 5 p.m. After that, I never opened my books. Okay, and in the morning I got up, I went through a series of comedy shows which are really my favorite. And uh, I think I had exams like around 12 o'clock or something. So I went through, I went to a spa also because I was staying in the hotel. So, you know, like I have done all crazy things and people are looking at me and thinking, what is this? And this is one of the beautiful advice what my friend had given and I followed it. Why I am telling you this is this, there is a scientific evidence behind why I'm telling you to stop reading. The reason being, you really need to give your brain a breathing space. You are putting your information from last couple of months. You are putting in, putting in, putting in. So the brain will not, it has not got a gap to settle down the things. If you keep reading till the nth minute, it causes such a tunnel vision. And remember, part two is not at all about facts and figures. Of course, you can get percentages, but that is a very minimal amount of questions. The rest of the questions, especially the EMQ, which carries a 60% of the mark, is to read those scenarios which are so lengthy to understand what they are asked, want you to answer and to search from that, those longer options. Okay, For that, you really need to give your brain a space to think it analytically. Please trust me, guys, and stop studying. It is not going to help you to study till the end of the minute. It is not going to help you to flip through to the end of the minute. I know most of the guys don't do that, but all of us girls, we try to do till the end. You should stop that. And trust me, it helps. Trust me, it helps. You should stop studying. Because I, I want to repeat myself, It's this exam is all about concepts. It is never about, yes, there are a percentage of questions which has to be very straightforward. It has to be very simple. But majority of the questions, especially the EMQs, they are never straightforward. If you miss one word, then you are gone. So please sleep well. Please eat well and please, please stop studying the day before exams. Okay. And do whatever you want. Keep talking to your people, like especially the positive people, people who has always trust in you, like your parents. 
they are the people who will never say that you can't do something. They always say that you can do this. Uh, stay calm, you can do this. And they have seen you over the years. Are your family, your husband, your spouse, your partner, like whoever gives you confidence, your friends, talk to them before you leave the exams. Okay? And eat well. Have a good sleep the previous night and please, please eat well. And try to keep, make a uh, travel plan if you're moving from one place to another. Like maybe you should make a plan like around 27th night you are leaving and 28th morning you are reaching there. Something like that. At least a day's gap you should really give for traveling as well. Okay. So these are my thoughts. You can definitely modify these, especially the way you want to revise it. It's completely your choice. But I want you to stop saying by 28th September. Okay. Am I clear so far? Are we good? Are you guys going to stop studying on 28th September evening? Will you be able to do that? I know it is something which you have never heard of, but trust me, this helps. Okay. Do we have anybody here? Yes, we will. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jayasri. Jayasri also confirmed from the uh, message. Thank you, guys. Now, what should I do when I get stressed out? Of course, you're all. I don't know about you guys, but I get up. My heart used to really run faster and harder. I don't know. I used to think that I will panic and collapse now, especially because I'm a kind of a person who gets up at 3 a.m. I'm a morning person, not the night person. I sleep off at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, but I always get up. The moment I get up, I don't know what to do because so many things and so many things to finish. So these are the things which I'm talking of last two days, like today, tomorrow, and day after. Okay? Try to calm down yourself. And the one technique which has helped me all these years is my deep breathing technique. So even if you don't believe, for my sake, just try to take a deep breath. It helps to calm down your nerves. Okay? And keep saying the positive things to you. It's okay. I can do this exam. This is something which I have already done. I know. I remember these facts. I have revised a couple of times. Okay, and always visualize yourself doing well in the exams. Because when you think the negative feeling, you always imagine yourself struggling in the exam. Never do that. Always think you're doing well in the exams. You are coming out smiling. You are very happy. Okay, so those are the visualization which you need to do. And remember to visualize yourself getting a result letter which says, congratulations, you have moved to the next part. Okay, that is the reason you're putting all your hard work and energy here. And always, it is not necessary that somebody has to say. You can always stick it in the paper and write down in a bold letter that you will do it and you have already cleared this part two exams and you're moving to part three. These positive, small, small note to yourself. Okay, it helps you immensely and it makes a hell lot of difference for your uh, appearance for the exam. Okay, and please remember to be kind to yourself. Whatever happens, uh, you, you have to give the best you have to give best version of yourself to the exam. And if possible, whatever it is, do a little bit of a physical activity, like maybe a stretch exercise in 10 minutes and go for a quick walk. It always helps to release the positive endorphins and it helps to uh, make you focus better. And as I always say that there are, even though they're good friends, they might always uh, actually, um, it always actually, you have two types of friends who are really good, but they are some, they're basically negative. They will tell you that, my goodness, how am I going to do? How am I going to clear? How am I going to remember? Okay, I'm not telling you run away from them, but for this exam period, please stay away from them. Okay, Try to keep in touch with people who are really positive, who keep smiling, who keep telling you that it's okay, we shall do it, whatever it is we have to face. And it is, please remember it is just an exam. You have given innumerable exams. So this is just one such exam. Okay, and Never try to remember anything. Okay, you are reading something, but you want to remember remember the survival rates of CA endometrium. Never do that. If you want to go through, just go back, flip through, and again move forward. This is the not the time to remember things. This is the time to flip through to give yourself confidence and to be kind to yourself. Okay. I have added a fake use of mind. I don't know how many of you could drill this. Okay. Frequently ask questions of me and it keeps us, keeps blabbering. So, will I remember everything? If you say, I would say, but is it required? It's not required to remember all the GTGs, all the nice, all the talk. 
trust me, it is not going to help your exam, even if you remember everything, because this exam is not about facts and figures. This is to help you to apply the knowledge. You have already understood the concepts. You need not remember the facts and figures. Yes, for some percentage of questions, yes, but majority, you need to apply the knowledge. And trust me, you will remember everything, even if you don't want. You will get that snapshots of the guidelines, snaps, uh, snapshots of your notes, uh, whatever we had discussed a point, maybe my voice message or somebody else's voice message would come into your mind. And trust me, you will do, do well. This is all possible when you keep yourself calm and relaxed. Okay. What if I don't know the answers? It's okay. Uh, it is not that all the 50 SBS, 50 EMQs, you know, it is not possible. You might not know a couple of questions. It's absolutely okay because you to pass this exam, you need somewhere around 65. But to be on a safer side, if you actually do it somewhere around 70, definitely you can pass very, very easily these exams. Okay. And what's the thing what will happen? You can always guess. There is no negative mark. Right, so you can always guess the question answer if you really don't know anything at all. In the worst of the cases, should I discuss questions in the break? This is something which you guys all imprint on your mind the moment you enter the Pearson Center till you come back. Okay, never ever discuss any question. And trust me, when you come back that night, you will not get to sleep, you will get a lot of flashbacks. Okay, that is absolutely okay. When you finish both the papers, when you come back home, you can deal yourself not in the exam in during the lunch break whatever see the thing is if you discuss it is going to put yourself down maybe some questions would be wrong obviously it is not 100 percent correct second thing is it is not going to help you to do the next paper third thing is it can bring your confidence immensely and you are really get panicked so there is no point whatever you have done and right that is fine fantastic if you forget about that go to the next paper do it well if you have done the paper one well very good can still do better to make your chance of clearing it better. You haven't done well, no problem. You still have a chance to clear the exam. Okay, I remember after part one, uh, after, after part two, first paper, I called up my friend and cried. I said, I'm not going to make it because my expectation towards myself was too much. I thought I have done too much. I have said it too many times. So I have really uh, revised well. So my expectation to myself was that I should I can maybe give a margin of five questions which could be wrong. But I knew from the fact when I came out that at least 10 questions are wrong. So what will I do? So the moment I came out, I didn't discuss with anybody because I didn't want to give stress to my friends. I, got, I picked up the phone and called my friend and literally cried. <clears throat> she said, relax. What else you can do? You have already done that. So it doesn't matter. So just go take a break, eat something and go, and go back to the exams. And exactly that's what I did. I just went to washroom, wash my face, and I gave the exams. I just had a good, uh, big fat meal. I went and gave the exam, and I still cleared. Okay. The reason why I cried was because my expectation of myself was too much, and I all I only remembered the questions which I did wrong. The same thing is going to happen to you guys. I have passed this path, so I know the same thing, same feeling will come to you, but it's absolutely okay because it is not the time. Uh, to think, okay, what will I do next? I have done so many mistakes wrong. It's okay. No problem. Okay. You call to somebody whom you really trust, who can really give you confidence and move forward. Okay. So uh, that is something which you really need to think is not to discuss and to eat well, drink plenty of water, go to washroom if you wish, and then go and give the next paper. Okay. But once you come back, as I'm telling, there will be innumerable questions in mind, in your mind. The moment you reach the home, the first thing you'll do is you'll flip through your iPads, you'll flip through your GTGs, you'll flip through many things. And trust me, this process will go on throughout the night. So what I did was I literally sat down, I wrote down all the questions. I wrote down all the questions. And then I knew that somewhere I have reached a safe margin. And that's when I was like, okay. And still, you will always have a doubt what you have marked, you don't know. So I had a confidence that I have done the best to myself. Okay, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be the best version of myself. So please remember, it is not about passing and failing. It is not in our hand. Because finally, 1% of luck is always required. But the, what you can do is what is in your hand to give the best version of yourself. For that, please don't stress yourself. Be kind to yourself. Okay, shall we take my revision notes? As I said, no, a big no. 
neither take the notes nor discuss with anybody. You can discuss about your shopping, what you're going to do after the exams. Of course, now it is very difficult even for that, but how you're going to spend time with your families, how you're going to spend time with yourself, that part of it you can discuss, but nothing beyond that. Can I make it in this exam? So, of course, you will. We all have passed this, uh, crossed this path, and if you have cleared, you will definitely you have done so much hard work with all the crisis situations like COVID, you're taking care of your families and every other thing. You will definitely pass. Am I the only one who don't remember? All of us, whoever is here, will always think that maybe I'm the one who don't remember much, maybe others remember. Trust me, it's the story of everyone. Nobody remembers everything, and it is not required that you need to remember everything. Take care of your mind and calm down your nerves. Whatever you know, whatever little bit you know, if you try to apply the knowledge, if you try to eliminate the options, even if you don't know the answer, most of the time you'll be happy. Never mark blindly. For God's sake, even if it is SBA, never mark blindly. Always rule out the options. Always, always rule out the options. Second thing is never assume a question. Okay, I have read similar questions, so this could be the answer. No, please, never assume a question. Always try to go through the question as if you're going for the first time. Try to eliminate the options and then only answer. You feel SVAs are easy. They're easy, but they're quite tricky. Okay, always look at the distractors, except most common, least common. Okay, please look into the distractors. I feel like crying. Yes, of course, it's a very common feeling to feel jittery, to feel overwhelmed, to feel frustrated, to be angry to your family, to your loved ones. It's absolutely fine because you're going through the whole process of it. And I know it is quite overwhelming, quite, quite energy draining. But trust me, this is this all these efforts is your work when you clear these exams. And remember, <clears throat> I always say this gratitude is the antidote of fear. So always keep counting your blessings that I am able to revise so much. I will definitely remember this well. I will definitely do these questions well. I will at least, if I don't know the answers also, I'll think and answer. Nobody can stop you from thinking positive or good things. Okay? So that is about the frequently asked questions of your mind blabbering. Now let's look at the PSMB you sent uh, what you should be doing. This is something, a very, very important aspect. Some of the things which I'm really going to tell you, I'm showing you in a couple of uh, coming slides, the screen, how it looks and what you should be doing. First thing is reach on time for God's sake. Maybe they would say 30 minutes later. It's okay to reach 45 minutes to one hour earlier, but please make sure that you sit in a proper place and are you stay back in your car, keep yourself safe, okay? And make sure that uh, you are wear your mask before you get out of your car or the vehicle or whatever, and have a sanitizer in your bag. Keep your ID cards ready, as I said, to prepare the bag. Please prepare the bag on 28, not on 29. Okay, even if you want to prepare on 27th, it's okay. Keep your dress ready, what you want to wear, be wear whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so uh, and definitely maintain the social distance, uh, distancing. Never, uh, like, even if your close friend is there, maybe you don't know which area they're coming from, it's always better to keep yourself safe. And if somebody tries to discuss with something, okay. I feel somebody is bell read, so I want to go and ask the question. And you are really not somebody who wants to answer. You can always say, I'm really sorry, dear. I really don't want to get panicked. I don't want to get stressed in the last minute. I really don't want to discuss. People like to think because the other person might also be very tensed. But you can always have a way of uh, denying them kindly so that you know they would understand your situation. And uh, once you have uh, done with the process of registration and all, you have to keep your things in the locker. Visit washroom if you wish. That is something which is very important. And um, keep doing deep breathing. As I said, I'm a great fan of deep breathing. It always helps to bring your system in place and be confident. If not anything, you have faced innumerable exams. Think that, okay, what will happen maximum? Okay, I don't know the questions. It's okay. I will try to look into the options. I'll try to sort out the questions. I will try to do my best. You are a, such a good experienced practice in clinician. Right? If not anything, you know how to apply the knowledge. So you would definitely be good. I'm a little bit of a confident. I don't want you, you to be overconfident at the same time. Please remember overconfidence will kill you. I have the confidence that it's okay. I can manage a couple of things for sure. And this is how your patient center looks in once you go inside. You have a pen and paper there, uh, like to calculate or to do things. Of course, you have to leave the pen and paper there inside. 
and you have a noise cancelling headphones. Trust me, I have given a couple of exams in Pearson Center, and these noise uh, cancellation earphones or uh, the headphones are something which is a blessing because you don't hear anything once you put on that. Okay, so it will be only you and the screen in front of you. And keep, uh, once you sit down here before you start the exam, pray if you believe, do deep breathing, and keep uh, telling yourself that you can do it and you're going to clear these exams. Now, a few screenshots, of course, this is not from the MSUG part two, but definitely to show you how it looks. So this is how the questions look. So you know the SVS, definitely you have to click on uh, one of the options. And then this is the navigation button. If you want to go to the previous, if you want to go to the next, that's how you go ahead with the navigation buttons. And uh, of course, uh, we know that uh, there are uh, there is 180 minutes for everybody. So you have 50 SPS and 50 EMQs. So the college literally gives 70 minutes. That is what they advise. 70 minutes for SBAs and 110 minutes for EMQ. So ideally, you have to consider SBA paper. If you ask me, I would want to do SBA paper first. Because for me, SBAs have always been very easy and I would finish it quite quicker. So once you finish the SBA paper completely, then exit, probably because you have two papers. That's what usually they do. Once you do one paper, you have to finish and exit and then only come to the next paper. Because I have given a couple of exams where there are two papers and that's what the procedure is all about. Unlike the exam paper where you can jump from SPA to EMQs, which I don't suggest actually. So it is better to do the SPAs, submit, and then go for the EMQs. Okay. And you have a tracker of a time. If you want to wear the watch, you can. Uh, but uh, if you wear something other than that, sometimes some of the PSM centers, they don't allow. But you have a screen, you have a time remaining here. Okay, you can see here what is the time remaining and how many questions you have answered. Okay, so that is what uh, they give you on the screen. This is the tracking of your time and the progress. And as you are all aware, first paper, 180 minutes, one hour break, which is for you to completely relax yourself, not to discuss, and then again, 180 minutes. Okay, now you have for you know to uh, you know where to look for the tracking time and progress. Now, there are so many questions. You don't know which one to do, which one to answer. Some of them you know, some of them you don't know. Okay, now what to do for those things? For example, uh, I would suggest you to do, I will take you through how I usually do these exams. Anyways, so when you're doing a question, for example, one to five, you know the answer, straightforward, you answer. Sixth question, you don't know. And you need some time to think. So you can always flag this, okay? There is a, on the top end corner, you have a flag for review. Once you click on that, okay, flag for review, once you click on that, you'll get this yellow button, okay? So this would show in the last screen. I will show you how the, all the questions look like. Flag for review is flag this question for reviewing the game. Okay, you can do these questions, uh, these uh, many things to as many questions as you want, okay? And once you have reviewed that, for example, second round you have reviewed that, and you want to unflag that, click on that again, and it will become white, okay? Flagging the questions is to, help you to understand which question you want to do an analytical thinking. Okay, you have to click it. It is very, very simple. Trust me, guys, it is very simple. Everything would be very clear on the on your screen. Now, you have finished 50 questions, and this is how your review screen looks like. Okay, for example, here you have only answered seventh question. Rest of them are incomplete. All the questions which are unanswered would complete, come as incomplete. Okay, so then you can go on to each one and actually you can answer. You can see these questions, six, 10 and 13 you have flagged. Okay, so that means to say, sometimes you have answered, but still you're doubtful. Even those questions you can flag it, okay? So you have flagged these questions. Now, once you have uh, actually gone back and reviewed all the questions, you have unflagged all the questions, you are sure that you're okay to submit, then you can actually uh, end review and uh, once you end the review then definitely it will be like the exam will be finished so as i said normally there would be two papers so after one paper they should give you uh, actually uh, an end review screen and then move to the next hopefully this exams are also would be like that okay now how do you want to really do it okay this is how i generally do it okay for example out of 50 SPS, i start reading from 1 to 50 Okay, so out of uh, 50, I know quite straightforward 30, uh, might not be 30, maybe 20 questions. I know simple, very easy. I know them very well. So I answered 20 questions out of the 50 questions. 
I went through one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. I went each through each of them, whichever I know. One, two, and three I knew. Fourth, I didn't know. So I left like that. Fifth, I didn't know. Six, so I left like that. Six, I did. So like this first round is something which are obvious and easy ones. I know that I can't go wrong. I've done that. Then the second round, I know that if I think a little bit, I know this percentage, but I need to recollect a bit. And I know this concept. Maybe I need a little bit to rethink. Those questions I take it in the second round. Okay. Third round. Third round, which really wants me to think a lot and to calculate. That means to say, I know this concept. Okay, I know whatever, whatever is category one, category two, category three is there. But the scenario is too big. I really need some time. So our, there's a calculation by a starter six. I really need some time. That is a third. And fourth is a round which the questions which are left with which I'm clueless. I don't know A to A, B, C, D of this. So this is either for my guessing or to eliminate the options. Okay. So once you do all these four rounds, again, go to the review screen and see. Of course, after each round, you can go to the review screen and whatever the incomplete questions you can uh, keep doing and flag whatever you think need uh, confirmation. And then you have finished all the four rounds. Go back to the review screen. There might be some questions which you still want to review. Go and review them and then submit the score. Okay. As I said, I really prefer to do SPEs, but there are people who want to do EMQs. The problem with the EMQs is they are much more time consuming and they might really take a lot of time than what you think, and you might really not have time for SPEs. So it's always better to do SPEs first and then go for the EMQs so that you will be able to finish everything together. Of course, after the break, again, you can redo the same thing in the same uh, fashion. Okay, fine. Any doubts, guys? I think uh, that finishes my uh, this one. Yes, any doubts so far for anybody? Because this is not about, uh, definitely not about the clinical aspects. I can see all of you are doing really wonderful job. I know the amount of uh, effort you're putting in, the way you guys are asking questions, the way you are interpreting. I know that all of you are on the right track. Okay, please remember, it doesn't uh, make the other person successful or one person not successful. The only thing which makes this difference is the attitude of you towards the exam. Okay, I want you to be humble, kind to yourself, be positive, and trust me, you all will pass this exam. Just have that faith and do whatever you can do in these exams and in this uh, preparation time. And remember one thing, why you get stressed is when you think that you cannot make it or you don't pass. This is not the time to think that whether you can pass or fail. This is the time to remember to give the best version of yourself. Give the best and leave the rest to God. Because you can't actually do much. Whatever you put in your situation, you have done. That's the only thing which you need to be going with attitude. Okay, I'll give my best. Whatever I know, I will analyze the questions well. Whatever I have read, I will do it well. Trust me, if you go with this attitude, nobody can stop you from passing. Okay? So don't stress yourself. Don't panic yourself. Eat well, sleep well, believe in yourself. We do believe in you. So definitely you will be able to come out with the flying colors. Okay. So anything, any doubts at all about Pearson Center? Uh, anything at all, guys? Any doubts so far? Or anybody? Hello? Uh, it is about the timing of the thing, you know. So suppose it is 70 and 110. Huh? Uh, so mm. uh, the clock... Uh, uh, like how does it show the time remaining or the time really it will show you the total time remaining it will not show you 70 or 110 that is the time standard what the college has given it would show you how many for example 160 minutes 140 minutes 130 minutes that's how they show they don't say it is for sba once you are doing they would say 70 minutes that's what i think because usually it is a total exam and you can choose anything whatever you want okay um, so that uh, clock, uh, like, uh, like, uh, uh, will it tick forward or backward? I mean to say, um, like, uh, like, suppose we starting the exam at ten, will it just uh, show ten o'clock and then we have to keep calculating? No, 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 no. It will show you the time, two hours, or uh, it's like one eighty minutes. No, so that's what it will show you. Three hours. It will show you three hours, and it keeps reducing. Two hours, 50 minutes, two hours, 40 minutes, two hours. That's what you should be knowing. How many minutes remaining, no? So in the last 10 minutes, it shows time remaining 0, 0, 10. That's what it shows. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, okay. Okay. Any other doubts, guys? Any other? Just please go on mute there if you have already finished your doubt. Thank you. Ma'am, I want to ask a question. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. Now these EMQs are pretty lengthy. How do you go about solving them faster? Like, see, the written exam is a totally different game by itself. You know, you can underline and you can, you know, sum up. But when you're reading it on a screen, by the time you reach the end, you've already forgotten what happens at the beginning. Okay. And it becomes pretty confusing. And then you've really lost the track of what's happening. And you lose a lot of time. Yes, uh, I would suggest uh, that definitely they will give you paper and pen. So, but I know it is impossible to finish write down. But you should always remember the lead statement. That is something which you always keep reminding yourself whether this question is about management or I have to diagnose. Okay, once you read the lead in statement, I think that, that uh, identify the uh, diagnosis from for the following scenarios. That is the lead in statement. Next comes your scenarios. So if you remember that it is about the diagnosis, as and when you move forward, you will actually, it is uh, stuck to your mind that you are you have to diagnose. But I would suggest for intrapartum care or uh, for all, all those things, it is better to write down on the piece of paper, whatever they have provided. And trust me, this has a lot of advantage, for example, for images. It would be quite clear. I knew that online exams would be a little more uh, different than the paper exams because we are used to, but trust me, I have done a lot of exams which with the lengthier one, and you can remember you can uh, actually increase the font size also. For example, this one is there. No? Here you can see the normal font. One second, you can see the normal font. This font size you can increase and only see that during that time you can see only that scenario. Okay, so it is not. Uh, I know it is a very practical question, Amiya, but trust me, that is not a problem at all. I don't want to say that the college would be kinder to you and they would give a less lengthier scenario, which doesn't happen. But trust me, these scenarios are easier to read on the screen than on the paper. Okay? Okay. Does that answer your question, Amir? And uh, do, uh, will they provide a mouse or we have to track on the thing? Like, how is it like? <laughs> yeah, of course. It, it will. Be, it is not a touch screen, my dear. It will be there. Will be a mouse because it's a basically a desktop system. And any technical problems, they would. You have to just raise your hands. And trust me, they are so helpful. They would really help you a lot to, you know, uh, put in everything. So it is usually, normally, uh, for the first people, uh, for the first time, they would show a simple demo. So I think you guys will have a demo before. Normally, the person does that. So I hope. They would give you that demo before you start. It is five minutes demo or something like that. Okay. So anything else, guys? I don't want to take a lot of your time. So any any other doubts? Okay. So it looks like all of you are good. Uh, so please remember, uh, just please remember to believe in yourself. You will all pass. Calm down your nerves and just pray for yourself and please sleep and eat well and stop studying. These are my final tips for all of you. Of course, we are there with you. It is just an official class which I just wanted to take so that uh, I can address to you personally. Okay, guys, all the very best. God bless all of you. You are in our prayers for sure and you would definitely pass this exam. And remember to give the best version of yourself. That is much more important than anything else. Okay, guys. Be kind to yourself and do the best. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Hello. Thank you, ma'am. Hello. Yes, thank you. Yes, Shilpa. Hello, Dr. Thank Sam. you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank uh, you. Yeah. For statistics problem, will it be mm -hmm. simple one or uh, will it require any calculator, calculators like Normal, those? Normally, normally for the exam questions, it would be very simple and very straightforward. Trust me, if you are uh, really struggling with the calculations, that means to say you are somewhere wrong. You are really doing it wrong. Normally, the exam questions are quite straightforward and it doesn't need a lot of calculations. It's a very simple one. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. So I'm going to end the session.
keep uh, praying. Uh, we are actually praying for you all. Thank you. Thank you. All the very best to all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining me.